The cells in the nose and throat and the innate immune system are very closely connected to the adaptive immune system, which is the part of the immune system that produces antibodies. But when antibodies are called in, we also get a rapid increase of inflammation. This episode is intended only to expand your knowledge and is not a substitute for seeking medical advice. It's important to first communicate with your doctor regarding any of the information you wish to put into practice, especially for serious illnesses. Okay, let's get started. All right, Nasley, it's great to see you again. It's been a number of years and uh, happy to catch up with you. So let's talk about our nasal and throat membranes. Can you explain how they work as a first line of defense against airborne illness? Sure, I'd be happy to, and it's great to see you again too, Dr. Gundry. Uh, epithelial cells are essentially skin cells that line our nose and throat. But instead of being seven to 10 layers thick, like the skin, they're only one to two layers thick, like the gut lining that I'm sure all of your listeners are very familiar with. Also, like the gut lining, they sense what's happening outside and have alarm signals um, that they use if they sense something dangerous, like a virus or bacteria. They also have their own immune system called the innate immune system. It doesn't produce antibodies like the adaptive immune system, but it is the first line of defense and it can trap infection because before it gets too, too out of control. Um, respiratory viruses like cold and flu viruses always begin in our nose and throat, which a lot of people don't realize. So, so you're saying that even if I, say, had uh, developed a, a chest cold, uh, for instance, that cold actually didn't start in my chest. It, it had to go through my mouth and nose first. Exactly. Um, that's exactly right. In fact, um, some very interesting studies on why children don't get infected to the same degree as adults um, found that it, it's most likely that their innate, innate immune systems are much stronger than adults, and that could be the reason. Uh, the cells in the nose and throat and the innate immune system are very closely connected to the adaptive immune system, which is the part of the immune system that produces antibodies. Once the virus or bacteria gets past the first line of defense, um, which is the innate immune system and the cells lining our nose and throat, then the adaptive immune system and antibodies kick in. But when antibodies are called in, we also get a rapid increase of inflammation because they need to infiltrate from the blood through our respiratory membranes where the bacteria and viruses are. And we start to feel much more sick um, and all the variety of symptoms get much worse. So we really don't want that to happen, um, and we really don't need it to happen a lot of times if our first line of defense is strong. So, but of, of, sorry, but of course, there, it's very important because um, you know antibodies do protect us. But I'm just saying that um, our first line of defense needs to be strong as well. So, talk to me about you know this mucosal defense system uh, in our mouth and nose. And, you know, why that, you know, I guess initial response or initial defense system is so important for defending our bodies from disease? Well, the epithelial cells and the innate immune system keep viruses from getting into our lungs. Uh, respiratory infections, as we talked about before, almost always start in the nose and throat before they progress to the lungs. That's why it's best to stop them while they're still in the nose and throat and to ha make sure that like our gut lining, our respiratory lining is nice and strong. So I talk a lot about mucus being very important in protecting our gut barrier. Uh, tell me why, why snot is such a good thing and we really want to have great snot. Uh, snot, or mucus, is a very powerful component of the innate immune system. Um, it's actually a very complex, viscous fluid, and it's one of our body's key weapons. First of all, it's sticky, so many harmful things get trapped in it before they can get into our bodies. Um, they get 
stuck in the mucus and then we swallow the mucus. Um, and then we all know what happens when we swallow things. Uh, they, they have to deal with the hydrochloric acid in our stomachs and a pH of two or three, which very few things can survive. Um, that's also why we can eat a lot of things um, that are not exactly sterile and we live. Um, so yeah, so snot is great. Uh, it traps a lot of harmful things, um, brings it to our stomach where they get broken down mm -hmm. um, before they can invade uh, the delicate respiratory lining, which I said again is one to two cells thick. Um, in addition, snot contains uh, many powerful molecules uh, such as lysozyme and lactoferrin, um, which are also found in breast milk and are um, have key uh, defense mechanisms that help our immune system. Um, and they also by themselves can disable viruses and bacteria. So snot is a very, very important um, component of our innate immune system. So uh, what kind of threats exist when it comes to the health of our oral and nasal microbiomes? Um, well, for some of us with various lifestyle factors, such as aging, poor nutrition, or exposure to too many environmental toxins, our oral and nasal defenses are weakened, and therefore we're more prone to get sick. Um, other things that might weaken our initial respiratory defenses are dehydration, allergens, and also most over-the-counter cold and flu medications, um, particularly those that contain chemical decongestants such as pseudoephedrine and uh, phenylephrine. These products dry up the mucus and make us much less able to produce uh, another key molecule, um, nitrous, nitrous oxide, which you have spoken about on many of your um, other episodes. Uh, it's a powerful antimicrobial defense as well. Interesting. The, micro the microbiome in our nose and throat um, are thought to help us produce this vital nitrous oxide. Um, I think you've spoken about nitrous oxide being a component of the the microbiome before as well. Also, in the mu uh, as the mucus in our nose dries up and becomes thicker, cilia in our nose beat slower. Cilia are small hair-like projections that move mucus, also something that's found in the gut. Um, we produce one and a half quarts of mucus a day, and as I said before, swallow most of it. We swallow about two times a minute, even when we're sleeping. So all of this is cleaning out our respiratory epithelia. Um, and as I said before, as viruses and bacteria get trapped in the sticky mucus and are swallowed, they're no, no longer able to make us sick. So one and a half quarts of mucus every day? Wow, that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a lot of mucus. Yeah, it is. Even though mucus... Even though, it, even though mucus contains a lot of powerful molecules, it's, it's actually 90% water. Yeah, okay. So, all right. So kind of on the same subject, um, it's true that respiratory illnesses such as a cold are, are more common in colder months. So why is that? Yeah, that's actually true. Grandma was right. Um, and there are two reasons for that. The first reason comes back to the cilia, which I just discussed. Um, they become rigid in cold temperatures um, and are less able to mu move mucus. Um, the other reason is that cold viruses actually prefer cold temperatures. They reproduce faster at colder, colder temperatures. Um, in fact, in our lab, um, when we study rhinoviruses, we, we, we bring down the incubator um, a couple of degrees centigrade so that they can multiply faster and we can test them better. And a, a rhinovirus is, is one of the common cold viruses. Um, That's correct, yes. Why might it be that some people experience seasonal allergies and others seem totally unaffected? I think your, your husband is a perfect example you were mentioning. Yes, yes. He, uh, my husband gets a lot of allergies and he suffers from sinus, sinusitis, I think. Um, 
Well, much like leaky gut and IBS, there are several theories, but no definitive answer just yet. Um, if someone has allergies, it means their immune system is hypersensitive and overreactive, um, as you spoke about um, in many of your episodes. Allergy symptoms are the result of inflammation. Inflammation can be beneficial uh, in small doses. It's the body's way of protecting itself. But as you know, it needs to be controlled. So going back to what we were speaking about earlier about the innate and adaptive immune systems, allergies happen uh, usually when antibodies, particularly IgE, enter the nose and throat. But as we spoke about before, antibodies come with a lot of excess inflammation um, because they need to penetrate through the respiratory epithelia to get there. So you don't necessarily want them when you're just inhaling some pollen. So basically it's an overreaction um, and there could be various reasons why some people are more prone than others. Um, perhaps they're more exposed to other types of allergens in, in their lifetimes. Um, perhaps it's due to living in indoor environments or exposure to pollution. Um, there are a lot of theories. Okay. All right, so tell us about BioVanta and why it was designed for cold and allergy symptoms. What exactly is it? Sure, of course, I'd be happy to. BioVanta is the first over-the-counter drug in the cold, cough, and sore throat category that's also 100% natural. Um, obviously, there's a lot of homeopathic products, supplements, but uh, BioVanta is classified as an over-the-counter drug and regulated by the FDA and is also 100% natural. Um, it has a unique mechanism of action. It's the only product that was designed to address upper respiratory inflammation directly, which is the root cause of cold symptoms. Um, most other products on the market just mask symptoms and inflammation. They don't actually treat it at the source. Um, in addition, most of the products in the over-the-counter cough and cold category were approved decades ago using old science. So how does this differ uh, or compare, I guess is the better word, to, to the other over-the-counter cough, cold, sore throat products? Well, we actually tested this and we recently published the results in a peer-reviewed scientific publication. You can find a link to it on our website, biovanta.com. Uh, we found that not only was BioVanta more effective than all the other products we tested, but most products actually damaged the respiratory epithelia and created holes in it, uh, much like leaky gut, but in the nose. Yeah. In the nose. Now, that, that doesn't sound like a very good idea. No. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this sounds like a, a total different way of dealing with these, you know, cold and cough and sore throat symptoms. Yes, totally, totally different. The, you know, you, you need to really take care of the nose and throat. It's much like the gut. The cells are very similar. So, so how does BioVanta do that? What, you know, what, what are the key ingredients that allows you to actually take care of the nose and throat? BioVanta contains um, a small dose of plant-based acetylsalicylic acid, or aspirin, um, which is one of the oldest medicines known to man, um, and truly a wonder drug. Uh, it also includes lysozyme, lactoferrin, and aloe. In combination, they work syner synergistically to stop inflammation. Um, the key uh, to the use of acetylsalicylic acid is the dose. BioVanta contains a very small dose of naturally derived acetylsalicylic acid, um, as well as, like I said, lysozyme and lactoferrin. Um, we derive our acetylsalicylic acid, or aspirin, naturally. So it's not petroleum-based. Um, and ours comes from methyl salicylate, which, which, as you may know, is in a lot of common foods like broccoli, coffee, um, and wintergreen oil. Um, plants use it as their own natural defense system against pathogens uh, such as viruses. Um, lysozyme comes from egg white, and lactoferrin comes from dairy. 
but um, they're also found, like I said, in, in breast milk and a lot of mammals um, produce, uh, uh, mammals and other animals produce these compounds um, for protection as we do. Uh, everything we use in our products comes from 100% natural sources. Um, as I mentioned before, these are powerful molecules that we also have in our stock. So y you do say that, that aspirin is beneficial in low doses, but not in high doses. Can you explain that further? Aspirin is a key inhibitor of COX enzymes, which play a key role in inflammation. Um, at low doses, aspirin blocks some co COX enzymes, but if you completely block them, um, then we found that another more inflammatory pathway kicks in. Um, this is also described in our paper that you can find on our website. We don't fully understand why, but we do know that there's a delicate balance in inflammation, and this is becoming more common in other areas of medicine and research as well. Um, it could be that some low level of COX enzymes are necessary um, and that the body treats it as an alarm signal if it's too low. Um, this is similar to why some people are told to take a baby aspirin every day instead of full strength. Gotcha. So what kind of, uh, other than this paper that you just uh, got published, and congratulations, uh, what Thank kind you. of tests have been done on the effectiveness of BioVanta? We've been studying um, this area for over 10 years. Uh, and also, all the ingredients that we use are very well studied um, and very well understood. And they've been around a long time. Um, they're also all natural and extremely safe. We just found the best and most efficacious combination of these ingredients. Um, and we were also were fortunate enough to be able to test them in our system the organoid system, which I mentioned before, um, which, you know, has only become available in the last few years. Uh, so we were able to test different combinations, different doses, and see um, what worked well uh, for stopping inflammation and keeping the respiratory cells healthy. Now, uh, the FDA doesn't treat uh, drugs like lightly, so you must have been very convincing to the FDA that this product was not only safe, but also effective. Did you, did you have to provide a lot of documentation to the FDA? Uh, yes, we have, a, we have a very good regulatory team, and they're very well versed in what the FDA looks for. Um, the FDA is very, very concerned about safety, as you know, um, and efficacy. So, yeah, the answer is yes. Yeah. Well, Dr. Lefetti, it, it's great for seeing you again and sharing this information with us. So where can listeners find out more about BioVanta and your research? Thank you so much, Dr. Bernie. It's great to speak with you um, and see you as well. Uh, I would encourage your listeners to visit BioVanta.com to learn more about the product and its ingredients and also to read our paper. Um, you could also visit AppliedBioInc.com to learn more about our company. Um, if you want to give BioVanta a try, you can use 15Gundry, 15Gundry, to buy it on BioVanta.com or on Amazon.com. Ah, great. So, and. Would we, would we find this in our local drugstore right now, or is it just easier to, to go to your website or Amazon? Oh, yes, I forgot to mention. Um, we are being carried uh, at CVS, Walgreens, Target, uh, which we're very proud of because these are top retailers, and um, you know they, uh, they have a really high bar for accepting um, products. And, uh, yeah, so you can, you can find us at major pharmacies, uh, but um, the discount code, uh, I think, would only apply on Amazon and BioVanta.com. Yeah, I think you're right. One last question. Uh, so is this a product that if you're feeling the symptoms of seasonal allergies or you feel you're coming down with a cold, that's when to start it? Could you ever preemptively use it in allergy season or do you have any information about that? Um, I think that you could pre preemptively use it because 
We have um, all natural ingredients. They're very unless, of course, um, you know, you have a, an allergy to one of the ingredients, like um, egg, milk, or, or aspirin. Um, you know, then you shouldn't use it. But yeah, a- anyone else can use it preemptively at any time um, because it's all natural. And um, it would also be best to use it at the start uh, when you when you just start feeling the symptoms coming on, like the first day or two. Um, you could use it later, but it's going to have the most effect early on because, um, as you know, inflammation is like a cascade, right? And so it just keeps amping up. So you want to kind of um, try to catch it before it gets too strong. Well, this is the, the perfect time of year to have you on because, uh, uh, yeah, allergies are going to start and the cold season is, uh, is rampaging right now. And I think it's great, uh, particularly listeners of my podcast, want always a more natural approach uh, to dealing with this. And, I, you know, I congratulate you on, you know, looking for a natural solution rather than the crazy stuff we've been bombarding uh, us and our kids with for 40 years. It is really crazy uh, stuff. And thank you. And you're an inspiration um, to all of us. And, you know, always promoting natural products. So I thank you as well. Well, great. Promoting natural products, but also natural lifestyle. Very good. All right. Well, keep up, keep up the good work. What, um, what's in the future before I let you go? Uh, is, is more interesting stuff coming down the pipeline? Um, yes, actually. Thank you for asking that. Um, so we started Applied Bio. Um, by the way, uh, my other co-founder is my husband. Um, ah. Uh, we, we started Applied Bio um, with the idea of tackling um, respiratory viruses. So our first technology is actually in, in those areas. Um, and then uh, when we further restor- researched the respiratory system and the respiratory epithelia, we saw that there was uh, a great opportunity here in the OTC category. So um we this is our first product um but our technology is our older technology is actually antiviral technology and that's going to be coming down the pipeline um soon uh as soon as we do clinical trials and that's a much more rigorous fda process so it's going to take some time but um that's basically uh antivirals um nasal sprays yeah all right Sounds like we really need that as well. So good luck with uh, getting that, yeah, FDA clinical trials. And I've, I've been uh, in them. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard work, but uh, hopefully they'll be yeah. worth it. I don't take it lightly, but thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast. Make sure to check out the next one here. What does our oral health have to do with the health of the rest of our body? Come on, Nadine. (laughs) Well, as I'm sure we all know, the mouth is a principal portal into the body, and it helps us assimilate our world.